for for sale. Uh, so that's kind of fun to do. He was supposed to have his party in retirement at the end of the month, but two weeks ago, or three weeks ago, when I was on travel, one of those three weeks, they said, oh yeah, he's actually going to go out uh, next Thursday. <laughs> it's like seven weeks turned into three weeks, and I'm on travel one of those three weeks. <laughs> so, no pressure. It's, yeah, no pressure at all. So, uh, that's what I'm working on. Maybe uh, in September I'll have pictures of the finished finished product. Right. Right. Those clamps you're talking about, um, I found an alternative way of doing that. You ever see these springs for cushions like sofas? Yeah, that's not, that's the old way of doing it. That's the old, yeah. the old way of doing it. Yeah. You get those, you can cut them and bend them and put little points on them. Uh, I am not going to glue the frame together with those clamps. Okay. They leave marks. They're, in my opinion, they're good for something you're going to plane down and refinish or if you got glue blocks they're good for jigs and holding stuff together that you don't care about i'm going to use uh blocks sandpaper yeah. with a band clamp and other clamps to okay. get it yeah. to get it glued just, up they are handy clamps but this is an alternative way yeah. coming up with yeah. actually i know you're pressed for time but he just glue some cheap pieces of pine on, you know, to take up those pinch points because those things really hold the yeah. joints tight. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was you know. I was actually thinking of that because you can use and then just plane it off, quickly, right? You know exactly because those you know, things work good for tightening it up. Because I've, I've got the I've got yeah. the profile yeah. almost done, so I'm going to try that this weekend and actually, clamp it up with a band clamp and see how it goes. Chew together with paper. Yeah. So same thing. Use the paper to do that. Yeah. Yeah, because you can saw it off, block plane it, yeah. and then use a scraper, and you'll never you'll never yep. see where it is. <laughs> All right. Nice. So this is something you may have seen in fine woodworking in the last bunch of uh, months. So Mike Pekovich has, has uh, you know, done a whole load of this. Um, fun little project. It was something I wanted to work on with my son and my wife. Uh, it's a really nice accent piece. This was like kind of a prototype. Um, honestly, the toughest part is you just kind of make the jigs. They're at you know, precise angles. There's two at 45, one at 60, uh, 67 and a half, I think one at 22 and a half. Um, and you really just, you know, you, the, the frame is just a bunch of, you know, half laps that, that you put together. They're a little bit long. Uh, you can't start it off at the precise size. And then, uh, you know, really you're just getting things to the right length, dropping them into here. This is on a screw, so you can kind of slide it back and forth, get the right projection. And, you know, I tried it with a Japanese chisel. Uh, I did a little bit with, uh, you know, regular chisels, but it worked best just to take like a 102 iron. Um, and just kind of use that to, to shave across. Um, so you do it on both sides. And then, you know, each one of these is, you know, it's three pieces. And you can see that kind of split away right there. Um, so you start off by making the, you know, half dozen pieces around the frame, then the middles, and then there's three pieces for each one. It goes together pretty easily. And, uh, you know, Matt Kenny's done a lot of good work with these in, uh, you know, in some of his uh, 52 boxes project. And, you know, Wilbur and I were at Fine Woodworking Live, had a chance to talk with uh, Pekovic about it. And he's just kind of real chill, real zen about it. And, and it's just neat. He's done a really good job of, of integrating it in with his work. This is uh, basswood, if I remember correctly. And he does it in with, uh, you know, white oak, and, and it looks really uh, quite nice. Nice. So just nice. a simple thing. But. You working from like a pattern or a template? No, I just you know just kind of it up, up on it. it. They had something in the in the magazine. I think it was like uh -huh. two or three ago, um, and you just get the right length. I think I even uh, yeah, it looks like I, I put these together out of a couple of spare pieces of cherry, um, and then you know really just kind of take the the groove in it. Um, yeah, I mean for the uh, like the dimensions on on those pieces. For this? Yeah, you yeah, you would template. Yeah, well, you would look to whatever you're trying to pattern. put it in. You would make it bigger but you would make these pieces where the half laps are going to join up okay. at your real dimensions. And then afterwards, once you have it all together, then you can take these down. We just never bothered. We got to the end of the weekend and we were like, okay, yeah, yeah. moved yeah. on to the next thing. But you know, my wife is going to build one of the little cabinets that uh, I think it was a Pekovich cabinet uh -huh. uh, you know, in there. So real nice, real simple. You know, like I said, it was in fine working and it's you know, not a lot of material and it has a lot of impact, you know, when people see it because it's not something you see very often. Not but here. Super easy. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Is there any glue in that? Uh, no, I just left it because again, we were just kind of fooling around. It, how do you, 
Would there be glue anywhere? You could if you wanted. I mean, you know, I guess you'd have to worry about a little bit of movement maybe. Because I'm thinking at a half lap at the corner how the pressure is. <coughs> well, you would normally, if you had it like almost like recessed into something, so it would almost be framed in, in place. So it wouldn't really, you know, break. Like, are you thinking it would See, like insert almost? Or something. I understand that. Yeah, yeah. because yeah. in his video, he's got long corners on it. Yes, and then you cut those after you're done. And there's there's a little bit of pressure, and I'm just worried about with with just them there. There's going to be some. Here we can test it. I'll throw it to you. <laughs> so, oh uh, yeah, it's still rolling. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's really no biggie to, to no, do. No, it's not. It's actually. Uh, it's a thick sprung. It's a lot of little pieces <laughs> yeah. that add up yeah. to a fair amount of pressure. So if your length is off your, your SOL, but yeah, I you know. Know, once you That's get it really right, cool. it's, it's pretty easy. Ooh. <laughs> yeah, and they will move. Go and throw there's it all back. sorts of different designs, but then you I'm get not going to throw angles. it back. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you're going to move on to you're going to move on to beyond the hemp leaf, or you're going to do other battles? I, I'm not sure. At some point, maybe, but this was more something for my wife and son to That's do awesome. than, than me. It's it uh, makes what's cannabis. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Camp quality yeah, for one of those things? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, except for the cutting, it's a little dangerous. Yeah. Uh, so, you yeah. think so? It's all you, Steve. Yeah, I'm not going to. Okay. This is a box. It's like the Go to the front. Yeah, go to the front. It's a, uh, this is a box. Uh, there's no. Not, no story about it. It was part of a set of six. I have the, three of them are sold. Three of them are not sold. <laughs> this one wasn't sold, which is surprising. I thought this was sort of the nicest one. But it shows you about people. What do you know? <laughs> what do I know, right? Uh, what, what do you want to know about this? This is um, boxwood. Uh, this wood is uh, has the unlikely name Panga Panga. <laughs> Has anybody ever used Panga Panga? No. Okay. God bless you. It's a, it's, a, 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 it's a cousin of Wenge. It's the lighter color Wenge. This is a, a surprising. That's a lot of boxwood. Huh? That's a lot of boxwood. Boy, what do you mean it's a lot of boxwood? I mean, it's, it's harder to come by these days. Yeah. Boxwood? Yeah. yeah. No. 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 You can get it. It's Costello boxwood. It's not the... It's not oh, the, it's not English boxwood. Well, French, but it's not, it's not French boxwood. I, I have some of that, but you can get that. It's not that. Anyway, um, so the panga panga is the dark wood. It's the dark wood. Yeah, you got to you got to hold it up so I can see with the camera. Oh, there we go. Is oh. it as difficult to work as wengi? Well, you know, wengi's not that difficult. It's just the splinters are a pain in the ass, right? Or a pain in the fingers. Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. The splinters. Yeah, it's it's like it. You know, it's. Did you saw the veneers yourself? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it, you know, it. Uh, that's the, this is uh, this is faulted maple. Uh, and again, as some of you know, I don't like book matches with spalted maple. So this is actually a, a, a what do you call running match or slip match. It was a nice piece, so it worked out pretty good. And uh, those are dovetails. And um, I don't know what else to say about it. It has a nice little thing that goes back and forth. And um, backside looks beautiful. What's that? When you open it, the backside goes right through. You like the backside better? Well. I could see it better now because it's a better angle to us. I don't know about the back side. <laughs> it's right. Looks great. It's from the same piece of wood, you know. It's right. It's important to have a good looking back side. There we go. <laughs> Ray, so should, Ray should know. Here, if people look at this. I was, here, they say, what are those little squares in there for? And I said, they're splines. <laughs> Not peas. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah. Well, this comes out. Are they, no, I, don't, uh, I don't put those things in for real because uh, people always want to change are them. Are they straight knife hinges? What? They're, they're not offset. They're not pivot hinges. These are uh, these are they're you know straight, those, right? These are straight. Yeah, right. those are pivot hinges in there. Um, in in the, 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 the hinging, and they're not offset. So that what else do you want to know? What else do you want to know? Let's this finish. is something. This I, you know I don't remember. I, it's probably something like. Uh, uh, some, you know what I mean, like a water, like a tongue oil or some kind of oil. I change it all the time, and I, you know, sometimes I don't know. You know, I just buy whatever's around. How much time did you spend uh, deciding on the handle design? Uh, weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's a really I mean, specific. Yeah, no, you know what happens. With, I'm sure you all, anybody who makes these things, the, the deal is that you spend at least 20 times as much time thinking about what you're going to do than actually doing it. Because it's not much to do. I mean, let's face it, it's just a bunch of pieces of wood. 
but you know, you, you, you know, sitting there and deciding, oh, you know, what, what am I going to use, and, and how are the colors going to go, and that, that, like, this is like a single piece of wood. That's what sometimes, you know, that's all, like, you know, so it's one piece of wood, and then there's those little things that are sort of stuck in there. But that's really, you know, sort of things. And then we, the, doing the, doing the uh, dovetails like this is, um, what can I say about this, about raised up, uh, you know, proud, proud dovetails. You can't fix proud dovetails. No, you all know it, right? So you got to, if you, if you make a mistake, you know, you got to kind of go, oh, shit. <laughs> no, you just make them, you just make them flush then. Well, you, I, uh, but that's the point, you know, you don't want to make them flush. So you got to be careful when you do that, you know. And I'm not very, I'm not particularly good at it, but, you know, you, if you do it enough, you know. So... If you mess that's up, it. they become flush dovetails. Well, that's what he's saying, but I know I don't. I don't. I remember there were six of these, so I couldn't make one that had flush dovetails. That wouldn't work. Uh, okay. So, uh, so and then you sell them. them. You know, okay. what do you do? They, that was going to be my question. They're spec pieces. Or yeah, yeah, just okay. make them. You know, you, you hope people buy them. Yeah. yeah. You know. How much do you ask for that one? It's about a thousand a piece. You know, actually, it's not enough. It's not like I'm making money on it. You know, it's just for fun. Can you talk about how you put that. Inner panel together. What this? Yeah. You know, I'm not entirely sure. <laughs> to say the truth, um, uh, it's it's usually I'm using. Um, uh, you know, I'd have to really think about how I did that. It's not a secret. I swear to God, it's not a secret. I just don't remember. I. I, I did you lay out I, the little dividers first? I, I, no, I'm sure that what happened is. <laughs> What kind of finishing do you use in these days? What? What kind of finish are you using these days? Uh, this one was probably uh, what is the one that I can't think of the name. Are you on drugs? I swear yes. to God, I'm not. And I, 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 I had funny, well, I had funny news today. So yeah. I really don't remember. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. I'm gonna. I'm making. Uh, I told. Uh, uh, I told Matt, uh, I'm making three jewelry cabinets, spec, you know, for speculation. And I said that when I finish those, they're much, they're bigger, and they're, each one is different, right? And uh, I'm working on one now, which is an ellipse. And um, when I finish that, I, I, told, I said I would do something about making jewelry box. I mean, actually, not about making the jewelry box itself, about fitting out the inside, how you fit out the inside of a jewelry box. Like what's the most important, what's the most difficult thing about a jewelry box? Necklaces. Those are the most difficult things. So you got to think about necklaces. But anyway, I was going to, uh, and I'm going to do a thing about that, and I promise by that time I'll remember how I did this. I really... Some I really, variation of what you're showing at the show? Uh, so, which show? So, Somerset. No, I'm not going to do this. Oh, you mean, wait, no, the no. demonstration you did? Oh, I don't remember that. That was either. great. Uh, <laughs> That was no, that was oh, that was scraping. No, no, it was scraping. I, I, I'm pretty sure that what I, what I would have done, I'm almost positive that what I would have done, is I would have made a panel, uh, it would be bir a, a Baltic birch, like thin, uh, eighth inch Baltic birch, uh, laid these on there. Yeah, this is what I did. I, I probably did this, put it on, uh, put these around without the, without the little orange pieces. Got it all lined up and then run the, uh, the slots for the, in the, you see what I mean? Yeah, that yeah, way you sure. don't have to get the, the edges of the veneer don't really, because I gotta tell you when, you, when you're veneering with salted maple, <laughs> it doesn't really work that well. So you don't wanna really count on having a really close fit. So then I would have run the this, this slots and I, and I probably did that with a, uh, with a, mo uh, with a mini, uh, mini mill to run those slots. And then you just take the little pieces of Chakti Vika and so the, so the substrate underneath there is like a sixteenth of an inch. It's not a sixteenth. It's probably yeah, That's it pretty thin be, Yeah, yeah, it might be a sixteenth. Yeah. yeah. You know, you can get uh, Baltic birch in, in very, very thin. Yeah. And it's very solid, you know. Uh, so yeah, that's probably what, what it is. What tool did you say you would have used to cut the cut the uh, a little mill. I have a tag mill. You know, which it's is very making. Yeah, 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 but they're wonderful. If you're doing you know, I can if you're ever gonna be doing things with little you know, get a tag mill. Because they're they're really handy for doing all kinds of things. I probably did it with that. Because then you don't have to worry about a lot of stuff. So you glued it up flat and then cut, cut the lines into it, 
and set, then set them in. So set this. Set it's this in. It's almost like doing inlay, oh, but the raised inlay. Set the set the the, the, this the, the those pieces in. So there was like a piece of like almost like a marquetry, and then you know you put it okay. right. That's that's I'm, I'm pretty sure that's how I did it. I think. Uh, yeah, that sounds good. Really so, yeah. so the, what's on top doesn't no, necessarily. No, no, no. They completely did. No, it's not the. There's because it's all veneer. Oh. You know, so it's not solid. I used to do that, but I don't do that anymore. So it's so, one. So the but you veneer both sides of the panel. Yes. Not, yes. And then you insert the panel into the into the. Yeah. Well, this frame. is just the panel. Yeah. Just right, the frame and frame. panel. You know, with the mitered uh, Very edges. Strange. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, the the hardest part was the handle. Actually. Yeah. Really. That, so it's really more of a marquetry technique that you Yeah, it's you know. kind of like marquetry, yeah. I just, Cause, the, the cause thing I about think marquetry is that it's flat. Because yeah. I was thinking that was a solid piece of wood through and through. Yeah, but it's no, no, you side. wouldn't, first of all, you really couldn't do that with solid wood. Not if you wanted it to, to last more than a couple months. Marquetry <laughs> is, marquetry is flat. That's the point, but I don't this like it flat. because it's not flat. This has got, you see, I like having uh, some surface to it. Oh, that's a, I didn't yeah. look at it that close. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's yeah. Like it's like reverse reverse trigger. Trigger. Yeah, It's right. raised, yeah, because that's the, that, I don't like the marquetry because the of that. The other way would be too easy. It's like <laughs> straight, <laughs> it's like straight, except you left yeah. them proud. Proud, yes, proud, exactly. We had, This whole thing was, yeah, proud, that was the thing, yes. That was the, yeah, okay, so that was, so that's it. Yeah. That triptych, yeah, that's what it's supposed to be. See, how, yeah. What do you, what technique like do you use to press the veneers? Are you using hot high glue or are you using a vacuum? Well, I used to have a small, I have, I've been doing, I did veneer a long, I've been doing it for a long time. I used to have a big veneer a press, press. A real press. You know, the big frames. Yeah, right. And I had one of those for years. As a matter of fact, it was one of the first things I bought. And it was the biggest pain in the ass in the world because those things weigh a ton and I'd have to move them. So I, but I, I did a lot of veneering. And then I made my own press, which I used around. The, and then I just got, because I'm doing curves, you know, ellipses, uh, I got a, a, what do you call it? Vacuum. A vacuum press from uh, Vacuum Press, which I'm using now and it's very nice, to the point where I don't think I'm going to use the other presses. I might for certain things, but uh, the veneer press is very nice. It sort of takes up too much room. So the veneer press, basically, you build your own frame and put in screws and... Yeah, and there's a way, for this kind of small stuff, there's a way to do that very simply. All you need is really one frame and, and five screws. And if you make a, a really solid one, then for anything bigger, you can just, you can get clamps. It's it pretty simple. It, yeah, it's, veneering's, you know, pretty simple. But the only thing that people don't realize about veneering that you really want to use two-ply. I mean, two-ply really is so much better than just using a single ply. So you make your own two-ply. If you can cut your own veneer, you know, you make two... You, ever, you all know what two-ply is? Yeah. You hear the term two-ply? When you go to a veneer place, find out what two-ply is. Because it's veneer it, with the grain going this way, and the other piece is another piece, and the grain's going that way. It's like right, It's got a backer. Like, like putting a backer veneer underneath it. Yeah, but you see, the thing is, is that if you have it there already, it's different. Okay. Because it's actually, a, it's thicker, A. B, you can deal with it much easier. C, uh, if you have any kind of wood that you had to use for edgings and stuff and you're putting underneath, it, it, they won't show through. So, you know, it, if you can get like two ply. plywood. It's not readily available, though. Well, most in veneer places. In, in, veneer places. In small will quantities? Have it. In small quantities? Yeah. Two ply? No, but that's the point. You got to make it yeah. yourself. You yeah, know, that, that's the thing. Yeah. You got to glue it up yourself. But if you once you do that, it makes a lot a lot of things easier. What kind of like glue you use? You use uh, glue? I use uh, Unibond 800, uh -huh. which is a vacuum press. It's, uh, it, it's a very good glue. Uh, you know, it used to be that it was dangerous because it had so much formaldehyde. So in it. Urea, but they, urea, yeah. yeah, but it had formaldehyde, so now it doesn't have as much formaldehyde. So and it's very good. It's very so, it's so very it good. Works glue. the same. With the less formaldehyde. Yeah, yeah, it's not bad. I mean, I use them both, and they're, they're, it's fine. You know, I mean, there's nothing. And it has a very long open time. You got to press it a long time. Doesn't you know, freeze, yeah. it's very solid. It's and it, it works very well. It's. I mean, I can't think of anything that's wrong with it except you got to mix it. You know, and that kind of thing. But that's. But actually, I don't remember. For this, I probably used the, my own press. But again, when you're doing something small, you know, you can use pretty much anything. And uh, I, but I used Unibond for a long time. So, uh, what else is there about this? That's it. Okay? Thank you. Nothing to it. Who's next? It's the most quiet you can buy as a half an hour. Oh, we're running over time here. This is terrible. Close.
Oh, it's the last. It's the last meeting. So. That's it. As you see all the members come up, you can see the hard work that they put in, in the pride, not only in their workmanship, but on their face and in their voice. Am I wrong? No. Nope. Okay. Um, art is art. Uh, the ability to look at something and say, wow, oh, that's pretty neat. I don't like that kind of stuff, but there's a lot of work involved there. Well, I've always been really handy with my hands. And I made, I'm 66, made this when I was 16, 50 years ago in, in shop class. So, who knows? Oh, I can't remember. So anyway, oh, no. are we going to heckle or are we going to listen? <laughs> yes. I hope they get to listen. We're, we're going to do both. Um, I don't want to pass it around. I'm sorry. You can come up and look. But even as a young kid, everyone was making these thick bowls. You could probably bounce them off the wall. I had to go with this thin... Yeah, thin edge. Yeah, it's a At 16, I, I had to do this yeah. better than the other the class. Well, it lasted pretty good. I do have a crack in it after 50 years. So um, that's where I first started, my love for woodworking. And uh, I went to the Marine Corps, come out, got married, got a job, was making tons of money, tons of overtime, and no time for me. We all know that. Yep. And um, so my wife says to me one day, why don't we do something together? Uh-oh. What do you want to do? <laughs> she uh -oh. says, let's go take the stained glass class together. We had just brought a house. And she says, we can do some nice stuff for the house. I says, OK. Pretty handy. I can do a lot of things. So we went and we took a stained glass class. Well, this is what they would call sun catchers. Yeah. Bad word to a stained glass guy. These are window ornaments. <laughs> <laughs> there is a difference if you go and look. If I was, I can pass this around. Notice the edges are round. Now these, these are flat. I had to put a bead of solder around the whole thing and here on the inside. Now when you go in and you look at these lamps, always look on the inside, they're flat. They just tinned it. It's flat. The outside may have a bead on it, but the in that's all Mexican stuff. Hey, you can pass that around. How do you get around the bead on it? And yet it's a part of Learning the technique of soldering technique. The soldering. The soldering technique. <laughs> it, it, it's a technique. Um, so oh, we, we, write a we did that. It doesn't run through. Yeah. <laughs> then my wife wanted to work on the house. Well, I couldn't bring my house here to show you. <clears throat> we had an addition put up above. I have a 25 by 50 ranch with a 2525 edition on the top. Every window, every door, inside and out, every doorway, I went and brought oak. I did all the, the door jams, made all new door jams. I had to put the, the old guy helped me out at the, the lumber yard, he, three quarter inch. He says, you gotta put stress reliefs down, yeah. so don't, this is all stuff I was learning, you know. And I didn't bring a piece of that. I figured they ain't gonna wanna see this stuff. But in your heart you're saying, yeah, well, I remember doing a project, and well, this was a big project. But you talk about how smooth things are. Look how every piece and inch on my whole house, anything wood, is oak and feel that. It all feels like that. And I was using that double, I got the same disease the other guy got. 
Um, Top of zero? Old timers. Yeah. Old timers yeah. disease. No one yeah. um, The steel wool. Yeah. Double or four zero. In between zero. the steel wool, I. I did, you, did you cut the moldings yourself? No, no, no. Those I brought. Okay, so you just the finishing of them. Yeah, I just did the finishing on them, and that was a lot and of the, work. And the mitering and the system. And the lighting. mitering, yeah, that was a lot of work in itself. And um, so that was like my next project that I worked with my hands and put a lot of heart into it. Then I went to glass blowing. Mm -hmm. I don't have time to do a lot of things because I work too much. So these classes would come up. I work nights. Everything is like from 7 o'clock to 10 o'clock. 8 o'clock, I got to be at work. So there was times in my life that I could not take a trip out. I can do it in the morning. Maneuver a little bit. So I went and did. Now, I couldn't make these again. You, you know what I mean? I, I could not do it again because it was fresh and we were doing it in the... Um, in the class, you know, with the with the teacher helping you out. So, uh, like I said, I'm pretty handy. We go on vacation, and we see this box. I went, wood is in my heart since I was 16. I says, you know, I really like that. Let's buy it so I can make a stained glass one. So I said, not only will I make stained glass, but the, the glass blowing, you, you, you take this here rod of glass and you, and you keep twirling it. Part of the, um, the exercise is just going back and forth to get your hand going, because this will turn red and just drip down. So you've got to get this thing and get it to ball up. So this is antique glass. You can, I'm not going to pass this around. Um, you can see, I'll leave it up here for a while, the antique glass, how it is. And very fragile. I put a lot, a lot of hours, like we all do, the market for people. God bless them. They do some fantastic work. I, I've gone to a couple of their meetings. So that's where this came from, was from that. So then, I decided to get involved with sandblasting. I wasn't going to bring this stuff tonight, but last week, the last meeting, you were talking about tables, making tables. And someone said, how can I put glass incorporated with the tables? I went, you ever go to a fancy restaurant or a bar or something, and you walk in and they got all this stained, either stained glass or they got a lot of... Um, Etch glass? Murals in, in, in sandblasted glass. I said, well, it's mounted in wood. Let me bring it in. All I can do is laugh at me again. I don't care. <laughs> so, and this, this was a, a duck I made. If, I'll leave it up here. You can come and feel it. But here with the eye, the eye wasn't touched. That's the furthest thing out. Do you, you feel that? Yeah. So that protrudes the most. Then, now this has, it's a heavy, it, it, it's like um, duct tape, but it, it's a white, thick, heavy tape so that when you sandblast it, you're not sandblasting through the tape. Easy enough to do, guys, you know. Um, I, I cut out the head, sandblasted it, just a little. Then, over here, you see, can you see the neck, the, the distinctions of the beak and the neck? Then you spray it again. Now, this, this gets deeper, this one, and each one gets a little deeper because one depth, this is the deepest here, because it looks standing out closest to you. Yeah, because that's the deepest part. And then, sand, you know, like this, I took out the head I took out first, and then you, you get the hang of it instead of dragging it out, and then the feet. But it, it, it's something, you guys got tons of tools, if you want to give it a shot, it's no big deal to do. Mm -hmm. Just a little imagination, you know. Um, again, wood, 
glass, wood, metal, wood. What goes with everything? It's, it's the imagination that people put together and the pride that you put into it. You all feel the pride. So, no, I don't have a lot of machines and I'm not the best speaker for everybody. But, uh, did you do that in a well, sand blaster? Sand blaster. Sand blaster. I have a. You have a cabinet? I, I had made a cabinet, yes. Okay. And then I didn't use it for a while, and then, eh, okay, goodbye. You know, so that's gone. But it, it, it's nothing. I just. I got some paneling, just something to hold it. Um, I got a piece of cheap plexiglass, cut two holes in it, a pair of gloves. Hooked up the compressor to it, you get sand. Um, if you ever need it, it's a place in in Fords, New Jersey. They have sand blasting suits that people do bridges. Uh, they mostly use called Black Beauty, but this was white sand. And when they do on cars and stuff, really intricate pieces that are an antique gun, something that you got to clean up. They use glass beads. A walnut shell, so there's a lot yeah, of different things. Yeah, yeah. Media. The, the yeah. different things that'll hit, break apart <coughs> without breaking the base coat apart of whatever you're trying to clean. So it's, it, it gets interesting. So anyway, that's just kind of some of the stuff, and then I do magic and whatever else I can squeeze in my life here and there. But uh, it all, I, I wish I had the tools, and this stuff I can kind of figure out. The joints, man, I got to take my hat off to these guys who figured this stuff out. You know, that's some dedication here. You know, I, I couldn't do it. Can't even figure out how to do it. So oh, I'm getting loose. Parts. And um, yeah, so it's, I don't do all woodworking, but I do a lot of pride in what I do do, similar to you guys in here. So it's about pride, <coughs> not just woodwork. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, that's it. Very good. Thank you. All right, thanks to all the presenters.